presenters. Um, one of them is my colleague, Steve Nash. He's an applied engineer at NVIDIA. And then also Paul Green, who works at Scalable Display Technology. And they're going to talk to you about uh, how you can use GPUs to create a seamless display for multiple projectors. So uh, I'll let them get started. Thank you. Thanks, Victoria. Thanks, Victoria. Uh, so sh just out of curiosity, show of hands, how many people here have set up a configuration using multiple projectors before? Uh, so a good amount of you. So. Um, you, you will have appreciation for this new capability that we're showing today that we're offering on the NVIDIA Quadro GPUs. And it allows you to create a truly seamless desktop across one entire uh, display configuration. I'm giving this talk with uh, Paul Green from Scalable Displays showing how they implemented it in their product. So the agenda for this talk, um, first of all, I'm just going to talk about what's the problem we're talking about. Um, what do we mean by a seamless display, and why is that hard to do um, so that it, it, it's really a nice experience? And then this is something that people have been addressing for a while, and just talk a little bit about how people have been solving this problem up until now, and then get to what our solution is, what's this new capability at NVIDIA, and then transfer over to Paul, who's going to talk about their implementation of it. So um, the problem we're talking about is um, when you, people have historically uh, wanted to add more pixels to their display desktop or um, immersive environment, but it's a, not an easy thing to do to get a really good experience. And if you look over the past 10 or 15 years, um, the total display pixels that people are using have not really kept pace with their increases in CPU and GPU power. And one of the reasons is because it's hard to get a really nice experience. One of the ways that people do that is people can add just some very inexpensive LCD monitors to their displays and use our um, NVIDIA's Mosaic desktop, where you get one complete desktop up to as many eight displays will be a seamless experience. Uh, not seamless, but it will be a, uh, one uh, contiguous desktop. The problem with using LCDs is obvious here is that it's, you get this very obtrusive bezel that's in the way. Um, you can take into account for that bezel by making corrections, but it's still kind of an annoying experience. If you're willing to spend some more money, you can get um, a bezel-less display, like this one at the bottom, but it's still not a zero, uh, zero seam experience. So the best way to solve the problem if you really want a seamless display is to take projectors and overlap them, because then you can hide the seam um, in that overlap region and not see any seam at all. But there are some problems inherent with that. One of the obvious ones is that um, neither the optics nor screens are ever perfect. So you need to take into account some geometry differences between uh, projectors. So even projectors that are uh, serial number consecutive can have differences that are obvious when you're um, showing them right next to each other. So you want to be able to take into account those um, distortions that happen in the optics or um, imperfections on your screens. The other thing that happens if you're doing an overlap, in that overlap region, your um, brightness level is twice as high because those pixels are getting displayed by both projectors. So if you want a seamless experience, you want something to ramp off the intensity in that overlap region. So it's a nice, smooth transition between the projectors. The other thing that people typically like to do with projectors is be able to display onto a curved screen or a dome to get a truly immersive experience so you can be surrounded by your, your display pixels. So you want a, a solution that will solve that problem to be able to project onto a curved surface. So up until now, NVIDIA has had a, um, some ways to account for some of these problems. Using the SLI Mosaic product, you can specify uh, either a bezel correction in between the screens or an overlap region if you're using projectors. But until now, there was not a way to account for um, any geometry correction or brightness differences between those displays. So that's what's new and what we're offering now. So the solution to um, fixing these problems uh, in multiple projector configurations is what people typically call warping and blending. So the warp is the geometry correction that people do to distort their geometry to fix what is wrong um, relative to the other screens. And then the blend is to do both the intensity adjustments in the overlap region or balance the um, intensity between the displays. 
people typically do both of those together, but they are orthogonal operations, so you can do them independently. The way that people have been doing that up until now um, typically falls into um, these two categories, where they use a hardware appliance, which um, something like this Mercator box, which will do both the warp and intensity adjustment. Um, there are some downsides of using that, of course, because these boxes are very expensive. And then there's additional uh, performance tax, because you're taking the output pixels from the GPU, feeding it through this box, doing the warp and blend, and then from there feeding it to your projector. And then in, a, in an environment that's probably already pretty complex, and you're adding additional complexity with this additional box. So some people are using just a software-only um, solution. Um, the downside is that is that uh, it's typically application-specific. So it's written for a particular application to do the warp and blend for that application and probably full screen only. Um, so what's new now is that we are offering a new way on, at NVIDIA to do this on the GPU. So we have a new interface through our NV API uh, control API to do both the warping and the intensity adjustment. There are big advantages here in that the GPUs are fast, they already have the pixel information, and in our display pipeline, we have this composition step that we can add, do, add this additional transformation and intensity map, <coughs> excuse me, intensity map adjustment um, to get this warp and blend effect. And then by doing it on the GPU, we have some additional flexibility um, in that we have some high quality filtering that we can do. And then we also have it integrated with our SLI Mosaic uh, product so that it will be aware of the multiple to screens making up a single desktop. Um, this solution works on our uh, Quadro 5000, 6000, and our Quadroplex 7000 products, um, all of which will be shown in our um, booth in the exhibition hall starting tomorrow. Um, additionally, it works with our G-Sync products, so people using projectors, multiple projectors, um, need to synchronize their displays. Our G-Sync product allows people to get that synchronization using both gen lock and a frame lock synchronization, so you can guarantee that all the displays are synchronized across your whole environment. This is just a, a cartoon of how this is typically done. Um, when Paul starts talking, he's gonna show you a, a demo of their implementation. Uh, but the way it works is that um, you need to come up with a warping mesh. And the way it's, it's done is that you will have a camera, um, for example, we have one over here on the table, that's gonna take a picture of our calibration data. And based on where those calibration points show up in the picture, they come up with a warping mesh that's fed to our API. And then through our API, we're gonna warp the scan out that's coming out of our GPUs. Uh, a typical warping mesh will contain one to 10,000 um, vertices in it, so it's not a huge um, primitive load on our GPUs. There can be some, there is a, a performance implementation, uh, implications from this though, in that um, the, there's a texture defined for the, both the warping and the uh, intensity map, so that that texture is taking up memory in both system memory and GPU video memory, just so that you're aware of that. Um, so th the way it's implemented is through our NV API um, interface, which I alluded to earlier. This is our programmatic interface so that people can configure and control their GPUs. You can do many things some of you may be familiar with already. So we're adding some new capabilities in the 275 version of this NV API. It's currently in the NDA version, um, which is pretty typical of how new features are brought out, they start out in the NDA version, and then as they mature, they um, transition into the public version. And the current implementation works on a single screen, um, but the, with the 285 driver, which is available in mid-September, um, it has the ability to warp and blend um, uh, SLI mosaic configurations. This is just some pseudocode of, of how it's implemented so you can get the idea. It's not a very complicated um, NV API program for those of you that are familiar with it. Um, you need to, as is typical with most NV API programs, you have to initialize the API. And then um, the, for warping, the new function is called NV API GPU set scan out warping. And there's a few parameters that you need for that. One is the display ID. 
um, which we have some built-in functions that um, some of you may be familiar with of how to get that based on the GPU information. And then you have to feed it the warping data, which is the most important part here. And that warping data consists of six float values for each vertex. There's the XY vertex coordinates and then the UV texture coordinates relative to the, um, the, the map. And then there's the RQ perspective correction if you're doing that as well. Um, the other thing of note there, the, that last parameter is a sticky bit that you can control whether you want that warp to persist through a reboot. And the intensity adjustment is very much the same thing. It's the same setup. And then for the intensity map itself, um, it has uh, GL RGB values for each pixel. So you can control each component independently with it for the map adjustment. And it has the same sticky value if you want that to persist through uh, reboot. And that's pretty much it. It's very straightforward. And as you'll see with Paul, it's, uh, it's, it's not too difficult to actually implement this. The hard part is doing what Scalable does is to come up with um, how that warp and blend should be implemented. So now I'm going to transition over to Paul, and he'll show you uh, their implementation of this. Uh, so uh, thanks for the introduction, Steve. Um, as Steve said, my name is Paul Green, and I'm a senior engineer from Scalable Display Technologies. So t today I'm going to talk about uh, how we've been using the new uh, Warp and Blend API from NVIDIA for the Quadro series cards. And first off, I'd like to say um, that we've been really honored and, and thrilled to be working with NVIDIA to help specify uh, the API that we're discussing today. Um, and we're very excited because we believe it's uh, one big step towards making edge-blended multi-projector systems uh, mainstream and mass market. Um, NVIDIA's contribution uh, is important to making these systems affordable in the commercial market. So that Mercator box that Steve mentioned is a, a $100,000 box. Um, and so now for a fraction of the cost, you can get all the functionality and, and more. Um, and so an example uh, of the growth in this area is uh, this year at Infocom, which is the, the largest pro AV trade show, um, there were 48 edge blended displays, um, which we were fortunate enough to do the cal calibration for 22 of those. Um, and just a few years ago, there were only one or two edge blended displays. So we've seen a lot of growth. Um, in this talk, I'm first going to talk about our company, uh, Scalable Display Technologies, uh, and then I'm going to give a demo of the Warp and Blend API on a two-projector system that I have set up over here. Um, and then I'm going to go through a few examples of past uh, installations that we've done at Scalable um, in the command and control, um, military simu simulation, and business collaboration areas. Um, and that could have benefited from this API. And then I'll go through some current and near future projects uh, that, will, that will hopefully use this API and show how it will benefit us and our integration partners. So uh, Scalable is the leading provider of auto calibration software for uh, seamless edge blended multi-projector displays. Um, we were founded in 2004 based off the 1998 PhD work of our co-founder and president Rajiv Sarati done at MIT. And the main goal at Scalable is to create a world where immersive displays are all around us um, and enabling new products and display management using our calibration software. We currently have over 100 customers in a number of different areas. As I mentioned, uh, command and control, business collaboration, data visualization, uh, MILSIM, training, Pro-AV, um, and as well as working with several projector OEM manufacturers like NEC and Projection Design to directly integrate our software into their uh, projectors. So our, our core uh, IP is, is auto calibration with a camera-based feedback to automatically warp and, and blend overlapping projectors into one seamless display. And our, our camera-based feedback algorithms are patented by MIT and licensed exclusively to Scalable. So I'm about to run the demo. Uh, maybe we can, uh, Jeff here will set this up. And I'll show our software in action. So what I'm showing here is just uh, what you would get with two overlapping projectors. And you can see in the center is the, the intensity um, is, is doubled, as Steve mentioned. Um, 
and, and I have open here uh, Scalable Desktop, which is one of our uh, flagship products. Um, and what, was, what will happen when I run this demo is we'll project a series of calibration patterns and we'll detect basically uh, where each pixel on each projector lands on the screen and be able to compute the mesh data that uh, Steve mentioned and send that off to the, uh, the GPUs. Um, so, and it, took, it takes about uh, maybe 10 minutes to set up everything. I've already gone through and set all the dials and knobs and I'm just going to hit the calibration button, which would take maybe 15 seconds. And I apologize for people on that side of the screen. I'll maybe duck so you can see, hopefully better. Uh, OK. Well, that's awesome. OK. I think uh, keeping it open was a bad idea. This always happens during a demo, of course. So yeah, in just a few seconds, we've uh, generated a seamless uh, edge blended display. And the, the great thing is that it's, you can basically run any application on Windows 7 desktop, and it sees the whole desktop as one virtual display. And you can quickly unengage if you're so inclined and re-engage. You don't need to rerun the calibration uh, sequence every time. It stores it, reloads it. So any, if your projectors move is when you would uh, need to rerun the calibration. So I guess we can switch back. So yeah, now, now I want to talk about the benefits of the NVIDIA API. Um, so Scalable Display Manager is, is one of our two flagship, flagship products, and it's designed for the uh, MIL-SIM and command and control markets. Um, it's capable of running systems with many computers, um, tens of projectors, uh, complex screen geometries like domes, cylinders, paneled screens, et cetera. Um, unfortunately, our biggest limitation is that Every application we want to use um, on these displays needs to do an integration with our software development kit. And uh, now this SDK integration isn't necessarily complex or challenging, and we at Scalable have already spent uh, some time and effort integrating with many of the most popular image generators and simulators. But the SDK integration is a barrier and a restriction. Um, and so one option is warping boxes um, to get application independence. And we've also spent considerable time and effort at Scalable uh, integrating and interfacing with these warping boxes out there, but they are expensive and add more complexity to the system. With the NVIDIA Warp and Blend API, you no longer um, require an SDK integration um, or warping box hardware to get the application independence. Um, and another benefit of the Quadro series cards is the support for gen lock and frame lock, uh, frame sync uh, features with the, the G sync card. Uh, product, which is important for um, multiple uh, computer systems and multiple projector systems. Uh, but so the bottom line is basically that we believe fewer requirements and barriers and restrictions will lead to a broader market and, and more opportunities to build systems and overall larger growth in that area. And our, our other main product, which I just demoed, is Scalable Desktop. Scalable Desktop allows us to warp and blend the entire Windows uh, desktop of a single computer with a single graphics card uh, with up to six projector outputs. Um, scalable desktop, as it is right now, works with a lot of hardware, including the NVIDIA GPUs and the GPUs from the other guys. Um, the, the, the key benefit of scalable desktop is because we are warping the entire desktop, no SDK integration is necessary. And so any application can take advantage of the warping and blending. Uh, and I'd say 
in some sense, our Windows uh, 7 desktop warping is kind of the model for the NVIDIA API, and so it seems maybe a little strange that we'd collaborate with NVIDIA to add functionality that competes with our own products. Um, but actually, I think we see it as an enhancement to our products because there are, there are actually a few gotchas with our current warping method. Um, and most notably, we can't warp the log on screen, the control alt delete screen, and some other protected Windows screens. We're just the way we do it, the warp goes away, and you'll get it. You get something like that when you try and log in. Um, you know, 99.9% .9 of the time, uh, the user doesn't encounter this during normal use, but you do have to log in sometime. Um, and, and you know, that last 0.1% uh, can be essential to make a solution marketable. Uh, and the NVIDIA Warp and Blend API gets us gets us there. You know, for example, nobody wants to present a solution to the boardroom for a Fortune 100 company and have it be a challenge to log on. And unfortunately, a full 100% solution is difficult for us uh, without going down to the graphics driver level, which is exactly what they did. Um, and I also say some other benefits of the NVIDIA uh, Warp and Blend API is you would see uh, a mild performance benefit. We already do our warping and blending on the GPU, but they have a tighter integration. Um, and then when using the quadru quadruplex line of GPUs, uh, we can ex significantly expand the number of uh, display outputs from a single computer. So in the last part of the talk, I'm going to talk about uh, several of our past, present, and future projects um, and how the NVIDIA Warp and Blend API could have improved the past projects and, and will be important to us in our current and future projects. Um, and I've chose examples from many of the main areas um, that we work in. So these are some pictures from a 100 megapixel space command uh, system built by the Air Force Research Laboratory. Um, you know, it's a massive system using 25 computers with uh, quadro cards, each driving two, two projectors for a total of 50 projectors. Um, AFRL's goal for the system was to explore uh, display systems for giving context to planetary scale data. You know, for example, if, if an asteroid, I guess an asteroid or, or a missile is going to impact the Earth. Um, and with, with this display, you don't need to give the ETA because you can just readily infer it from, from the scale on the display. And this was a very custom, custom display system. Uh, and the software uh, running it, it required a custom SDK integration. Um, so essentially, this is a huge display that can run only a single application. And if we migrate over to using the NVIDIA Warp and Blend API, we suddenly can run many applications, which is very appealing. Another advantage of the Quadro architecture is the, the GenLock capability. And you know, because there's so many computers with this, it was, it was very important. So here's another example in the command and control area. This is the Aegis combat system display. Uh, it's being used aboard Navy ships throughout the world. Um, and the prime integrator on this project was Lockheed Martin. And the video wall control functionality was provided by, or was done by uh, Video Display Corporation. And I put this on here to show that, that, the, that a lot of the command and control systems are not just a one-off system like the AFRL dome. Um, and, and instead, there will be many installs. So being able to simplify the hardware and the software requirements can be a big win in terms of the overall cost of the, of the display and, and then even maintenance going forward. Uh, and in this case, we've delivered uh, 22 cruisers so far, and we expect uh, 62 destroyers to follow. And I believe we're going to switch over to doing the Quadro-based NVIDIA Warp and Blend API for the remaining in, uh, installations. So here's an example uh, of one of our data visualization displays that's installed at the MIT Lincoln Laboratories. It's, it's a 12 projector, 20 megapixel display wall uh, that's also touch enabled. And then like the previous two systems that we're using our scalable display manager uh, product uh, with multiple computers, this install is based on the scalable desktop product running a single computer, um, which is what I demoed earlier, um, that allows the warping and blending of Windows 7 desktop. And it's currently up and running in, in uh, Lincoln Laboratories on a non-quadro-based uh, hardware. But the, the purchase order is already in for two quadruplexes, um, and which we'll be installing any day now. Um, and I think this will be the first system outside of our offices that's going to use the NVIDIA Warp and Blend API and scalable software. Um, and I think 
Lincoln Laboratories chose to upgrade to quadruplexes uh, primarily because they wanted more GPU power, but also because they, we told them that uh, they'll be able to solve these annoying issues like the Windows login screen. Uh, and in addition um, to being a data viz wall for Lincoln Laboratories, we've been using it as a prototype testbed design for a virtual shopping aisle uh, system for a Fortune uh, 500 company that wants to build many of those. So here's another AFRL uh, system. It's, it's a F-16 fighter simulator um, sold by Immersive Display Solutions. And I'm calling it uh, low cost in, in quotes here because in the MilSim market, a 500K 48 megapixel simulator is pretty cheap. Um, and I think one of the keys to making this system low cost is, is allowing it to be repurposed for many projects. So having application independence uh, is very important for that. And also, uh, limiting the hardware and warping box uh, requirements can, uh, can help keep the, the cost down. Um, so here are some examples of, of uh, displays in the com uh, commercial collaboration area. Um, and they're all running scalable desktop. The image on the left, the large image on the left, is the boardroom for a Fortune 10 uh, company. And it was designed. To, for facilitating face-to-face -face meeting where everyone can see the slides and the data but still face each other. So we've got two uh, mirrored displays on each side of the room. Um, and I guess it's been, been called the best uh, meeting environment people have seen at that, at that company. And so they're really happy with it. Um, and they're, in fact, going to take out those, those uh, screens, those 25-foot screens, and replace them with 40-foot screens because I guess they want to have more people in the room. Um, and in the past, you know, rooms like this could cost 150k, and now it's down to could be down to 20 or 50 uh, 50k. So we expect that um, more and more people will be building things like this. The the image on the top right um, is is I guess what you call an all-purpose room at uh, a large oil company. Um, I call it all-purpose because sometimes it's used for data visualization. Uh, sometimes it's used for presentations, and sometimes it's used for video conferencing. Um, and the last image on the bottom uh, right there is uh, an example of the Lewidia electronic whiteboard system. And the system has an electronic pen stylus that allows you to write directly onto the display like a virtual whiteboard, and which is really great in the, in the classroom or for a small company office. And I, we actually have, uh, have a system like this in our offices. Um, and it's great for meetings, uh, presentations, and as well as brainstorming and, and collaborative uh, meetings. Uh, we, th we think it uh, scalable that in the near future, uh, every conference room that has a single projector today will have a multi-projector system soon. Because if you think about it, uh, you know, we have more display power as an individual at your office desk where you have maybe four or eight megapixels of, of display with two, across two or three monitors um, than you do when you, when you meet in a group where you have a single projector. Maybe it's HD resolution, two megapixels. Um, and so right now, the NVIDIA Warp and Blend API is really the most direct, risk-free route to a 100% integrated solution. Um, so to summarize, uh, Scalable display technologies is the uh, leader in camera-based auto calibration software. Um, and we're very excited to be uh, about the new NVIDIA Warp and Blend API um, for a number of reasons. Uh, chief among them is that it makes our technology application independent, which is really huge for us and all our partners uh, in the command and control and, and sim markets. Um, and we, we think it will go a long way to, to growing the edge-blended multi-display market, and hopefully I've uh, convinced you that there are loads and loads of examples of systems that uh, are enhanced by this API or just made possible now by this new API. So I'd just like to say thank you. And if, for more information, you can send an email to these two email addresses. Uh, I guess the top one is you'll get, Steve, yeah. Steve will get, and someone at my company will get email from the second one. <laughs>